I've got an idea! Hold on. That's not good. Oh, is that a crab? That there is a monster crab hole, man. Welcome to the field day kitchen. Boom. Oh, are we back? We're back. What is going on, my doggies? Welcome back to another video. Your boy is back on his feet, and I am absolutely frothing about it. Look what I've just woken up. I've actually just woken up in paradise. We've got the troopy in this episode. We're taking the tinny for a run. We haven't used this tinny in a bloody long time. We're gonna blow the cobwebs off this little boat. I'm gonna run you guys through what's gonna happen today, but for now, you guys know the first thing always, coffee on the fire got a beautiful little fire going on down here little billy full of water look at this absolute paradise we're going in the boat i'm actually really really excited to blow the cobwebs off this little tinny we haven't used her in a long time i reckon i think i've drove 900 or just about a thousand kilometers yesterday to get to where we are right now so it's going to be a little bit of fun jumping in the tinny it's been about a year since we've put this thing in the water. Literally blowing the dust off it. Look at it. She dusty. Quick little barista session. We're going to hit the road. Objective of the morning. Catch the biggest, dirtiest mud crab we can possibly find. Cook him up around a fire this over before that sun sets. That's basically the objective of this video. Hopefully, maybe we'll even be able to chuck a fish on the fire as well. But we've got a barista session happening here. We've got views that'll soothe any sore eyes. I'm gonna chuck a bit of firewood in the boat, load the troopy up, we're gonna hit the road as soon as I have this coffee and enjoy this bloody serenity that we're in right now. Look at it. Oh, I'll see you up in the air. We're out of here. bloody good feeling to be back out in the bush I've been sat up at home now for five weeks not doing too much I've been really really trying to do what the doctor says and sitting back and not doing a lot if you guys are new to the channel what's going on my name's Phil Days make sure you bang that subscribe button because we got some dope content coming your way if you guys are new if you guys are OG to the channel thank you so much guys I bloody love you all but um you guys will know that I've had a broken foot had stem cells injected into my right ankle at this point on right here, right now, we're five weeks into the stem cell treatment. I'm not supposed to be in the bush. I'm supposed to be sitting at home. I'm supposed to be resting up. But legit, I'm going to go absolute crazy if I stay home any longer. Like, I'm building pergolas. We're building things at home. I just can't sit down. Proper ADHD kit. But look, I'm out here right now. Doctor's orders. He goes to me, if you're going to go out filming, you've got to go out and be super, super careful on your ankle. That's why we've got the tinny in tow. So I'm not going to be doing any heavy lifting on my ankle. I'm just going to be driving the boat around the creek, resting the ankle up, hopefully get some big slobs on the deck. But look, five weeks into the stem cell treatment right now. It's too early to say if it's done anything, but it feels pretty good. Still sore to walk around, but it's always, it's, the stem cells are never going to fix it 100%. It was just a little bit, just get, we're just going to give it a crack. If that doesn't work, we'll have to go do surgery. But um, that's it, doggies. Five weeks into the stem cell treatment. Doctor's orders. Take it super, super easy. Don't push yourself. Do not walk on uneven ground. So um, this is what we're doing. We're sitting in the boat all day. It's going to be a bloody good day. I'm absolutely frothing from every, every orifice right now to get out there. So um, 
We're not too far off the creek. I'm going to drop the boat in and see if we can get some monster crabs. Ow! We're about five minutes away from dropping the tinny in the water. Look at this. So sick, man. It's very, very, very low tide right now, but not complaining because what we actually do want is an incoming tide. That tide's going to start pushing in the oceans out there. As that tide pushes up, a lot of the fish come in here and they start swimming around looking for the smaller bait fish to chew up on that high tide. So dead low tide right now. You can see the tide comes right up here. It's down here now. So I'm going to drop the tin in. just sorting myself out here sorting out all the junk that tide's still draining out right now so we're, we're in for a good run time is 8 55 in the morning so we've got a whole day to play out here it's gonna be killer i'm just gonna keep setting up these nets i'm gonna head down creek this is what we're using for bait big dirty mullet like that these things are about a year old they've been in the troopy fridge so it's a good time to use them up let's get some crabs on the deck All right, we're basically ready to rock and roll. Everything sorted, couple of crab nets, couple of fishing rods, tackle bag, couple of lures, throw net. The world is our oyster, doggies. First thing we're gonna do, see if this engine starts. This engine hasn't been started in like a year. Come on. <laughs> You're joking, how good's that? That thing hasn't been started in at least a year. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's hit it. <laughs> All right, first things first, when we get home, I've got to grease that up, that's squeaky. But look at this, man. We're on a mission, doggies. We got, I think we got about five or six pots, that's plenty, I've got one here, but that's enough, man. We've got enough, I only, I only want a couple of crabs. Look at this creek. Beautiful. Right, our first pot is about to be launched into the water. So what I want to do is, we've got the wind coming from that direction and it's heading that way, which means these floats are going to be heading into the center. So you wouldn't want to put your pot on that side because that means your, your float will get all tangled up in the mangroves over there. You want to chuck him out here. So, the, um, so that float now will head out that way and we can easily drive past and pick them up so we'll suck this side we're only in 1.2 meters of water right now it's pretty bloody shallow in here we're getting it done first pot in the water have a look at this on the sound i'm not too sure if you guys can see this well you can see this that that was the water level before and then it comes down so we're sitting in before we're in one meter that's dropped down to three meters man Look at this. That's where we're going to be fishing later. I'm going to put a live bait right there. Ow! This is sick fun, dude. I'm going to put a pot in the entrance of this creek. We'll keep creeping up the end of that creek. Just drop the pot there. Got another one way down there. It's living, man. This squeaky old thing. <laughs> Last pot going in. This is the zone. We're in the entrance of three different river mouths here, so we're just going to drop it in the middle. Get out. That's it, bud. We're on. All pots have been activated. This is sick. Can't really put the pots like hard up against the mangroves because the tide's that low right now. Like this is just fully blown mud. So that's where the crabs will probably be right now. They'll be sitting in the middle or sitting in their holes on the edges. They'll smell that bait. They'll be out there. All right, this is what's going on right now. We've got five crab pots situated from here all the way down to the end of the creek there. They are probably gonna have crabs in them already. So they've only been in the water for 10 minutes, but that's sometimes all it takes. What I'm doing right now is getting out this old school bag which has also been in the bottom of this boat for a year and this boat is based this bag is just basically full of stuff which could 
help you when you're out here. So we've got like little baby first aid kit, just heaps of random shit. We got crab gauges, fish hooks, sun cream, bug spray. There's a towel in here, there's chewies, there's rope. There's just heaps of random stuff in here. But what I'm looking for is that there. That stuff there is called inox. And I'm gonna stop that engine from squeaking because it is giving me the absolute shits. Every time I go around a stick or a log, it's like eee, eee. I can't deal with it. All right, let's fix it. <laughs> hey! Look at that, mate. Only took a little bit of bloody inox. Look at this. Not a squeak. That's good. Thanks for coming. And that right there is why it pays to have a bag like this on every single boat. Everything, everything I own has a bag like this. It's, you could basically call it a, an emergency bag, but it's got like a lighter. It's just got everything in it. I got one in the Truby. I've got one at the big in the big boat at home. If we didn't have that in the on us right now, I'll be spending the entire day listening to that thing squeak. Mac 10's always like, you don't need all of this shit in the boat. You'll be, you don't need it. One time that you get stuck in the bush or the engine doesn't start, you really, really hope you had that bag on you. So there's a little bit of a heads up for you. Keep a little bit of good stuff on the boat. Little survival pack, I'll call it. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get this 10 foot cast net. We're gonna go get ourselves a little bit of live bait because that hole that we found up there before it just looks really, really good. So, I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk. I'm not really supposed to be walking on uneven ground with me foot, but we're not going too far. We'll just head up there, see if we can't get a fish, a couple of mullet in the throw net. See how we go. All right, looks like there's a fair few mullet just up here on that corner. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get this net ready, take about a quarter of the net in your hand, come under your holding arm and then flick that over your shoulder then what you're going to do there's a million ways to throw a cast net but this is the by far the best way i've found to throw a 10 foot net then with what you got left over you're just going to go half half like that and like this and you're ready to rock and roll i've just seen those fish up here this net this net should get a nice spread should just gonna slowly sneak up on them now. Oh, they're garfish. There's guardies there. I don't want guardies, we want mullet. All right, here we go, ready? There's a good amount of mullet there. Oh yeah, that was lovely. All right, we got bait for days. Beautiful bait. Look at this. So just out of one simple cast with this net, we've got some ridiculously good bait. Look at that thing. I think there's about probably 10 fish in here, which is more than enough for now. So what I got here, excuse my big face, is just a live bait bucket. So we're just gonna chuck the live bait in this little hole. They're gonna stay alive because we'll keep that in the water. Fish will sit in there, we're laughing. That is the perfect, perfect bit of bait right there. That's going on a hook live. Chuck him in. Look at this. Look at that for a bit of bait right there. Here's a cracker. Look at these little ones. Perfect, there's a little lollipops, man. Mangrove Jack, barramundi, threadfin salmon. Probably a bloody catfish, hopefully not. That's good. Look at that. That's it, one throw, 10 fish. You can see now this tide, this tide's starting to fill in. 
There's a shitload of activity out. There's a lot of fish jumping on the surface. Little mullet getting chased downstream. You can see on the sides here that it's starting to fill up. All them little feeder creeks are starting to fill up. This is it. We've got about 10 beautiful mullet for bait. We're going to go check the first pot now. We're about 50 metres off it now. This is sick fun, dude. Sand flies are that crazy out here. Like, I'm getting absolutely peppered by sand flies. This is a really good, like, sun deterrent and fly deterrent, but it's so thin. Sand flies are actually biting me in the back right now. It's hectic. I'm trying to spray them off, but I'm getting peppered on my back by sand flies. This is too thin. I'm going to have to go and, uh, have to go get something else maybe but i'll just try to push it out sand flies are so thick dude look at this they're all over me but we're coming up on the first pot right now a slowly creep up on it there she is big muddy big muddy big muddy oh little mud crab he's a baby that's a little female we don't want a female come on darling all right one female next pot coming up come on big juicy crab in this one let's go baby come on give it to me give it to me oh who are you hey all right we've got a little crab nothing nothing to write home about but we'll let him go that's a little male but he's not big enough come on bud See you later, mate. All right, no good. Another one. That's another little baby. See, he'd be a little male, this one. You can see him. Yeah, he's a little buck. He's tiny as well. Come on, big dogs. Uh oh, that's not good. That was close. All right, where's all the big crabs at? Come on, come on. Oh, we got fish. We got three brim and a crab. That's a female. That's a little female. You can tell she's a female straight up. Small claws, big shell. And then you can obviously see from underneath there, female. And we're going into the bush. No good, man. This pot up here is our last pot. And um, every pot's been loaded, but we've got nothing size in them, which is unfortunate. So this is our last one. We've got all day, man, but usually it's quite strange. I get some big crabs in here when I'm walking around with the crab hook. Come on, big dog. Another one. Baby. Proper baby, that one. See ya, mate. picked up and it is howling through the center of this mangroves down the front of the river right so I've just chucked an anchor out the front if you guys remember this morning we drove over that ledge and you could see this it went from a meter down to three meters that big drop on the sounder that drop is about three meters at the back of the tinny right now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go see if we can pull a fish out of it I'm gonna get this live bait bucket if I can catch one they're definitely alive that's for sure Oi! We've got a jumper. Hold on. That little fella there just launched out of the bucket. But this is what we're gonna do. Plane setup, sinker, hook. I'm just gonna pin this little mullet right in the back of the shoulder. Just like that. We're gonna send him straight out into that big dirty hole. It goes from one meter to three meters. Hold on. So now, it's a waiting game. I'm just gonna sit here for a couple of minutes, probably 20 minutes, eh? We'll just let that live bait swim around for the next 20 and um, see if we get any action. 
Then I'll go check the pots, come back, fish again, check the pots, come back, fish again. We'll just keep doing this all day, it's killer. I've got one crab pot tied off the back of the boat so I can check that every now and then as well without having to go check the others. But uh, so far, we're going hungry. We really do need something to cook up because I've got no food. So uh, fingers crossed, eh? On the move! We've had that bait, we had a live bait out there for probably 50 minutes and um, I honestly nearly fell asleep in the sun. I was just kicking back, having a hell of a time, just chilling and the rod just went boom and that was it and the live bait got bitten off at the back, just missing the hook but it would have been, it was a clean cut like mangrove jack or something like that. Anyway, what we're doing now, floating down river, I'm gonna pick up that pot, this pot, that pot, we're gonna go do a pot check. See how, we, see how we go. We need to get a crab in this drop, man. I know there's big crabs in here. I've got them before. All right, come on. Big crab on the deck, coming up. Come on, baby. Be the one. That's not heavy at all. There's nothing in there, except the crab claw hanging off the side. That's strange. Oh, look at that. They managed to get the bait out of the net. You're joking. All right, crabs are smart around here. Oh, is that a crab? That's a crab. All right, we've got a crab in here. This wind is so hectic. He might go size too. Uh-oh, we've got a mud crab on the loose. This net's got nothing in it. We've got one running around. That goes back out there. Oh no, wait, don't go in there. No, oh no, that's not good. All right, this is chaos out here. All right, here's an update on the crabbing adventure. I've driven the boat into the mangroves, into the mud because the wind is just piffing us down creek. Like we're actually flying down creek. In here, down there, and then under the wood, there's a crab. And um, I can't see him whatsoever. I can only see him when I put the GoPro in here like this. Oh no, where is he? I actually can't see him. Oh, there he is there, look. All right, there he is in the corner. There we go. Hey! Oh. oh, bro, I can't see a thing right now. I don't even know what's going on. I've got no idea where this crab is. I can feel him. Just come out. That was so close, bro. Oh no, he's got me GoPro. He's actually biting the camera. All right, this is what we're gonna do. This is, he's gonna think this is my hand and he's gonna be really angry. Go on, bite me, big dog. Yeah, yeah, bite me, bite me. Hey. Dude, this is an absolute mission! Get 
Yeah. All right. Now we're in the safe zone. You have no idea how hard that was. We've got a crab. He's a buck. <laughs> what a mission! There it is. First crab. Well, it's not the first crab of the day, but this is the first kind of size size-ish crab. So this is a green mud crab. You get green, you get brown mud crab out here. The way you can tell the difference straight away, what you do is you look at this knuckle here. So the crab claw comes across, you got the lollipop there. Then you get this knuckle. That knuckle has several little bumps on it. You can see one, two, and then another one at the top. So that's a green mud crab. It's got to be 150. And um, he's not measuring 150. He is a tiny bit too small. Oh, we're taking drift. He's like a couple of mil too small, so this crab's gonna have to go back, but that's a green mud crab. If you ever catch him, just remember the double horns on the knuckle there. A brown mud crab, it'll be smooth. Anyway, he's going back and we're taking a drift. All right, let's go, let's put him back in the water. Come on, we just want one crab, man. See you later, you big rig. If this was any other normal situation, I would have got out of the boat, I would have got a crab hook and I would have walked straight into those mangroves there and just looked for mud crab holes. You guys know that is my favourite thing to do, that's why we've, we've been never actually caught mud crabs doing what we're doing right now, but got to rest the foot, got to listen to the old doctor, so uh, pulling pots is what it is, but right now pulling pots is not working for us, eh? We've got one pot coming up here. About 20 minutes has passed, so we're just going to do another drop here and see how we go, another pull here and see how we go. Surely we're gonna get one crab. One crab around the fire is all I want. How hard can it be? Come on. This is the one. Oh, it's kinda of heavy. Yeah, it's kinda of heavy, it's kinda of empty. Keep going. All right, we got a crab. But he's tiny. Going back. Empty. Go, go, go. Good. Coming from under the boat, there's nothing there, I can feel it. Oh, look at that. Hey, hey darling. There's another female. I don't know what's going on out here. But we don't want these females. And they are flat out. Female. This is the plan right now. I've just bootlegged it right back to the car. The car's just up here. I just legged it back up. I got myself a nice cold drink, which is gonna be incredible because I'm sweating my titties off out here right now. Also, what I just grabbed is a crab hook. Now I know the doctor said do not walk on uneven ground. Just sit, just take it easy and stay in the boat. But look. This is fair dinkum, I've got no food out here for tonight. We can make a damper, but I've, I've got no food except for making damper. So this is our options right now. We're gonna go keep pulling these pots and just getting female crabs, which is pissing me off because I don't know, I would've caught about 20 or 30 females, female crabs. 
great sign for the um, comeback of the baby crab, but not for us eating food. We want a big dirty buck. So what I just seen then, I went up one of the little finger creeks. I found a big crab hole sitting right on the bank. Problem is we're fighting the tide. You can see this is high tide right now. She's gonna start draining out. This little finger creek's probably gonna be hard to drive in. It's 0.7 of a meter of water in it right now. And that's on a point and that's on the high tide. So we're gonna have to start moving. And uh, look, we're gonna get a crab on the deck. If we don't, I'm gonna be pretty sad. <sighs> now the boat's stuck on the sand. Come on, let's go. There we go. All right, doggies, we're going. We're gonna get a crab on the deck. It has to happen. We're going! Now we're playing a game of race the tide. So we've really got to move our asses. That tide's gonna start draining out. We're gonna be in some serious problems. So we're playing a game of race the tide now and dodge the sticks in this little creek. I really, really hope this crab hole has got a monster crab. It's right there, it's literally right here. Like I could probably get it with the crab hook right now, but it's a big hole, man. And the advantages of having, the advantages of doing what we're doing right now, this side of the creek, nobody can access this side. So, dude, could be proper, proper mecca holes because these crab pots, useless. That's why we've never done it in an episode before because they're crap. All right, let's have a look at this hole. It's right there, check this out. Crab hook. Cut that engine off. See that hole right there? That there is a monster crab hole, man. We're going to investigate right now. Anchor in a little tree there. Boom. Look at this crab hole, bro. It's massive. Holy dooly. You can see crabs have been walking in and out. Oh my God, look at the sand flies, dude. Check out the sand fly. I don't know if you guys can pick this up on camera, but sand fly's hectic right now. Crab hole, massive. You have got to be kidding me. It's empty. It's actually empty and it only goes down about 500 mil. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to go for a little walk around here. Very easily taking it easy on my foot, right? Holy smokes. There's the tinny, there's the first hole. Look at this hole, man. This one's got water in it, that's usually a pretty good sign. Look at that. Unbelievable. Both of them holes are bone dry. There's not a crab in sight. They're not even deep either, they've been abandoned. You can tell when the tide comes up and down, it just fills them up with mud. Those holes have got nothing in them. I'm doing what I told myself I wouldn't do. Walking on uneven ground, sloppy, sloppy mud right now. Look at this. What an idiot. I just want to get a crab, dude. Oh, we've got a crab. He was hanging on the wrong side, but he's another green. He's a little male, but he's too small. Anyway, there he is there. It's nice to see a crab though. Wait, don't you dare go back down there, bruh. Wait. There he is, little buck. He's another green crab. You can see from his knuckle there, those spikes. He's too small, unfortunately. See ya, pal. Look at this. 
We're getting plenty of crabs, but they're all babies. So we're gonna change your game plan. I'm bringing all the nets in. Come on, get off. See you, mate. We're bringing all the nets in, changing game plans. You're kidding me! Ladies and gentlemen, that has got to be up there with one of the hardest crabbing missions we've done to date. All right, all the crab pots have been brought in the boat. I've brought them up. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to change game plan completely. We're going to put the boat on the trailer. We're going to go to another creek. We're going to see if we can go get a big slob of a fish for dinner because uh, this little creek system right here now is it's just dead, mate. We've got, um, we've got a heap of crabs, but they were just too small. So we're going to launch the, the boat back on the trailer. We're going to full drive out of here to another spot and uh, we'll see how we go there. But right now, we ain't got no dinner on the deck and it's not good. Time, 2.57 in the afternoon. It's, it's four hours of sunlight left. We've got four hours to get food. Bubba, bubba. All right, we're going to put this boat on the trailer. Ow! I'm not really sure why I'm carrying firewood around because we ain't got nothing to cook. Time, 3.18. We've got to get some kind of food on the table. Well, the reason that I'm carrying firewood around is because it is extremely hard to find firewood out here. If you see with the terrain, I mean, it's just dead. Little, little spin effects bushes for miles. So you know, it's always good have a little bit of firewood, you never know. We've got a couple of hours left for the day. You never know what we're gonna catch. So we're gonna load up the trailer. We're gonna go to another creek. I don't know anymore. Just cast it out, the next fishing rod in the new spot. This is the spot we're gonna call home. I've stayed here a couple of times. It's actually a really, really dope spot. Got the troopy popped up. That's where we're gonna be sleeping. Got the tinny parked up next to that. I like this spot, this spot's pretty dope. That's like the mouth of the river just out there. Here's this nice sandy beach. First bait just hit the water. I just put a little bait out there. It's a dead bait, so I'm gonna get this thrown out, see if we can pick up some liveies in here. Put some live bait out. Who knows? A couple of hours before that sun sets. See how we go, eh? We're still in the running for dinner. If not, it's damper. Ain't nothing wrong with a good old damper though. Couple of mullet down there, you reckon? Yeah, look at that, looks pretty good. Have a sniff. Oh, oh, fish on, fish on. I can see him. We did good. I'll eat these for dinner. I'm not even joking. Yeah, we've got a couple. That's beautiful. Oh, these are little bony herring. That's even better bait. All right, let's go, get him in the water. That is beautiful fresh bait right there. Chuck him in there, lock the lid. Chuck him in the water. We'll tie him up onto this fishing rod holder. Bang. What I'm trying to achieve here is a big, dirty bed of coals. So I'm just gonna load him up, see if we can achieve that bed of coals. Of course we will. We're gonna be cooking down there. Look at that sun. 
We've got a live bait out there on that rod. Fingers crossed that thing gets pumped. I really hope it does. Look, today we have, we've, we've been in an absolute bloody slog today. So what I'm going to do is, I've got faith in that rod out there. I hope we do get a fish, but if we don't, I'm going to go hungry. Like I said, we ain't got no food. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start busting up a beautiful little bush damper. I'm, I actually, I'm actually really excited for it too. So let's start doing a little bit of a damper. Ow! Have a go at this. This is the only bag of food that I've got out here with me. <laughs> we got a little bit of liquid beef stock. I've got no idea why. Self-raising flour. We've got another flour. A couple of sultanas. A little tube of honey. Some ox cubes. This is legit all the food we've got. Tabasco sauce. More sultanas. More of this stock stuff. I don't know why. We've, this is so old, dude. All of this stuff in here is so old. There's more. Must have been wanting to make a stew at some point. Anyway, that's all the food we got out here. So obviously it's damper or nothing. Or pancakes, but damp is the best. So we're gonna make damper. Right on my doggies. Welcome to the field day kitchen. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're making damper. Self-raising flour, a pot. I'm only gonna make a little one this time. I usually make like dampers and they're that big that I can never finish them. So self-raising flour in a pot. I got light, lightly sparkling soda water. I'm gonna add that instead of normal drinking water. What this does, the bubbles make it super fluffy. So we'll chuck in about that much. I'm just gonna start stirring him up. Right. Now when your damper is at a consistency like this, it's not too sticky, it's not too watery, but it's not too dry, and it's sort of sticky like that, that's ideal. And especially when you do a circle with it. Look at that, that's good. A little bit of flour. This is the reason why I'm making the damper here and not out there near the fire because it's about 50 knots of wind out there. Look at it, it just flies away, but that's all you want to do. And then you want to dust your hand. Get your big beautiful damper. Put him over here. Start working it. Sultanas. Look at the state of this kitchen right now. Just gonna drop all those sultanas in there. And then I'm gonna start kneading them into the bread. They're gonna get all mixed through as I do this. I've also added salt to this as well. While I do this, I'm watching that rod like an eagle. Because if that rod goes off, it means we're eating proper food. If not, damn it is. Nearly done. Here it is, the finished product of the damper. Look at that little cutie inside there. That is the perfect size damper for one person. Pumping fire. Nice little bed of coals surrounding the bottom of the damper. Boy, ah, that's gonna be so good. I'm starving. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Have a go at that. That is our first fish of the day. That is a mangrove jack. And I reckon he'd be going very, very close to size. Absolutely incredible fish. Very good eating. Crazy set of teeth on them. I don't know if you can see them there, but they got some serious teeth on them. He smashed a live mullet. Let's see if this little fella's size. He'd go close. They've got to be 300. Nose on the nose. Coming down. 300. Oh, he's, he's bloody size. Oh, he's about a mil over. His size. Look. He's not gonna, I'm gonna let him go. He's not that bloody big. He's just, you'd be able to keep him, but I'm gonna quickly get him back in the water. Beautiful fish, look at that. What a gorgeous fish, man. We've got a damper cooking down there. That's enough to feed me. If we get a good fish, I'll keep it, but this thing's not big enough. Epic fish, but. All right, buddy. See you later, mate.
doggies. The damper is done and it's done at a very, very bloody good time. I just watched one of the most banging sunsets over there in the west. The sun is slowly melting away. In this camp oven, we've got a damper. This damper was a nearly a disaster. Look at the color of that. Look at the bottom of it. Bro, I saved it. I just got to it in time. This thing would have been roasted. The inside of that's gonna be incredibly good. Don't you worry about that. We'll have to give, we'll have to cut him in half. The inside's gonna be amazing, ready? I haven't seen the inside either, but I just know that it's gonna be good. One, two, three. Oh, look at it steaming. Look at that. Inside, we dialed that. The outside doesn't look so great, but the inside, boom. I am that hungry. We're gonna dig in right now. What I've got behind me here, there's a little bit of butter in a container. This is the first thing I've eaten all day. Even, oh no, I had a steak for dinner yesterday. Here we go, check this out. Look at that, steaming, falling apart. Beautiful bits of bread, bush bread. Cuts nicely, a little bit of bread. I'm gonna launch on a little bit of butter like this, a huge block of butter, and we're just gonna eat it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, doggy. Well, I can 100% guarantee you that I'm gonna eat all of that, probably half that butter, all of that, and really, really, really bloody enjoy myself around the fire. That was a fun day. Slowly getting back into these videos with the old bung foot, but um, that was fun. That was hard work, man. We've got some big crabs out of that creek and today just didn't, didn't show us any, sort of, any kind of loving, but um, that's fishing. I'm gonna enjoy this damper. I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Dude, it's amazing. Peace, much love. Wah! Nah, these flies are so hectic, bro. All right, we've got a bloody hot billy of water. We've got a good old-fashioned cuppy coffee cup. Cup a ca 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 I can't even speak purely because I haven't had my first coffee for the morning, but here we go. Tell you what, mate, it is a bloody good feeling to be... to be... Blah, 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 blah. Speak English, you f One, two, three, let's go. Oh! I can't get comfortable. Because I got a hundred thousand sandfly bites all over me. You know what I mean? 